everybody. It's Mr. Steve. We are here for another History's Heroes. Our hero today is not a human being, actually. It's a dog. And that dog's name is Balto. And there he is right there. We're going to start off reading the story about the bravest dog ever, the true story of Balto. And then after we read the story, I'm going to show you a couple of videos to show you that there was not just one heroic dog, but two. Well, actually, many. There are two main ones. Let's first read about Balto, though. The Bravest Dog Ever, The True Story of Balto by Natalie Standleford. Standleford, sorry. This is a true story about a very brave dog. His name was Balto. The year was 1925. Balto lived in Nome, Alaska. Nome was a frontier town. Most of the year, it was buried under ice and snow. In winter, there was no way to travel through all that ice and snow, not on planes or trains or boats or cars. The only way to travel in Alaska was by dog sled. Balto was a sled dog. He worked for a gold mining company not far from Nome. He carried all food and toys um, to the miners. It was a good life for a sled dog. And there he is right there in the front. Balto's driver was named Gunner. Gunner made Balto his lead dog. The lead dog runs in front of the team. He follows the trail. All the other dogs do whatever the lead dog does. So the lead dog has to be the smartest and strongest dog of all. One cold winter day, a terrible thing happened in Nome. Two children got very sick. Their parents called the doctor. He was the only doctor in the whole town. When the doctor saw the children, he was very worried. The children had a terrible sickness. It was called diphtheria. The doctor did not have the medicine he needed. Without the medicine, the children would die. Without the medicine, many other people in Nome would get diphtheria too and die. The doctor knew he had to get some medicine and fast. The hospital in Anchorage, Alaska had the medicine, but Anchorage was 800 miles away. The doctors in Anchorage put the medicine on a train, but soon the train got stuck in the deep snow. The train was still about 700 miles away from Nome. The people of Nome had a meeting. Everyone was very scared. What are we going to do? Asked the doctor. We have to get that medicine. At last, someone said, what about a dog sled relay? When one team, the dog gets tired, a new team will be ready to take over. The room buzzed with excitement. That did seem like the quickest way to get the medicine, but the doctor frowned. It will take about 15 days. That's a long time, too long, he said. Maybe the doctor was right, but there was no other choice. So the mayor spoke over the radio. Please help, he said. We need the best drivers and dogs to help save our town. Gunner, who's right here, heard the mayor on the radio. Gunner knew he had the best dog team and the best lead dog. Balto would come to the rescue. And here's a map of Alaska. So you see, this is where Nome is way over here. Ooh, there's my finger, okay. And Anchorage is way down here. Where is it? Let's see, there it is. So that is how the sled dogs were gonna have to go to get that medicine to Nome. On January 27, 1925, the race to Nome began. 21 dog teams were in the relay. Each team waited at a different stop. The first driver took the medicine from the train. He wrapped it in fur to keep it from freezing. Then he drove his dogs as fast as he could to the second stop. His run was made in good time. But soon the wind began to blow hard. The air grew colder. A blizzard was coming. It was one of the worst storms ever. Still, the race went on. Somehow, each dog team made it to the next stop. In one team, two dogs froze to death. So the driver hitched himself to the sled. He helped the rest of his dogs pull through the storm. 
Gunner and Balto waited at their stop in Bluff. They were going to run 31 miles from Bluff Point or Bluff to Point Safety. It was the second to last part of the race, but the storm had slowed things down. Gunner had been waiting for two days. He did not sleep. He wanted to be ready to go as soon as the medicine arrived. At last, Gunner heard the dogs barking. The medicine was here. He put it on the sled with a small stove and a little food. Then he hitched up his dogs. Balto stood proudly in the lead. Gunner cracked his whip. Mush, he cried. That meant go. The team ran into the snowy night. At first, the team made good time, but soon snowdrifts blocked the trail. The dogs sank up to their necks in snow and they could not move. Some began to panic, but not Balto. He stayed calm. That helped the other dogs while Gunner dug them out of the snow. At last, the team was on its way again. Then the team crossed a frozen river. The dog and the sled slipped and skidded on the ice. Oh no! Over went the sled. Gunner got it up again, but the medicine was gone. Wildly, Gunner dug for the medicine. He could not see through the heavy snow, but at last he felt the package. He put it back on the sled. That was close. The team kept going across the river. Suddenly, Balto stopped short. Mush, Balto, shouted Gunner, but Balto did not move. Then Gunner saw why. The ice was cracking. If the team fell into the river, they would all drown. Balto saw that. He had stopped just in time. Smart dog, Balt Gunner told him. Then he saw that Balto's feet were wet. If they froze, then um, poor Balto would never be able to walk again. Quickly, Gunner unhitched Balto from the sled. He led the dog to a patch of powdery snow. Gunner rubbed Balto's paws in the powder. Soon they were dry. Balto was ready to go once more. Balto led the team around the cracking ice. At last, they reached solid land again. Were they still on the trail? Gunner had no idea. The snow blew so hard, Gunner could not see his own hands. But Balto had run this trail many times before. Now, it was all up to him. You really see the picture, that's how snowy it is. Finally, the storm died down. Gunner saw point safety just ahead. Balto did it, thought Gunner. He couldn't wait to warm his hands by a cozy fire. But all the lights were out at point safety. Was the next driver there? Gunner did not know, and there was no time to find out. So Gunner and Balto did not stop. They had never been so tired. But they raced on through the night towards Nome. It was just before dawn. The sky began to glow. In the town of Nome, everyone was sleeping. Gunner and his team pulled into town. They had made it. Balto was too tired to bark. They had been on the trail for 20 hours straight. They had driven 53 miles. Gunner took the medicine to the doctor. The doctor was surprised. He thought it would take 15 days to get the medicine. But Gunner delivered it only after five and a half days. Thank you, Gunner, said the doctor. You are a hero. Balto is the hero, said Gunner. I could not have done it without him. The doctor went right to work. He gave the medicine to all of the sick people. In a few days, they would be well, and the town of Nome would be saved. All over America, people cheered for Balto. They read about his bravery in the newspaper. Balto was the most famous dog in the world. A year later, the people in New York City put up a statue of Balto. It still stands at Central Park. Lots of children play on the statue. They remember Balto, the bravest dog ever. And that was the story. That's pretty amazing, huh? So all that time that they had to go all that way, these dogs in blizzard-like conditions, snow up to their heads for dogs. They had to worry about um, rivers that might crack open. They had so much to worry about and to do, and yet they did it because they were very, very brave. Every single one of those dogs in Gunner and all of the other um, drivers too, they were all very brave. 
And now I wanted to show you a video next because there was a certain dog whose name was not mentioned in that story, but who also had a very important role in doing uh, that, that traveling. So let's get to that point here. That dog's name is Togo. And we're gonna watch the true story or the real story of Balto and Togo. It's gonna to tell you how Togo is a hero too. Perhaps you have heard of Balto, the famous Siberian Husky who made history. Unfortunately, when his tale is retold, the real story of what happened is often omitted. Although Balto was declared a hero, it was actually another dog which made the hardest part of the mission that saved thousands of lives. Stay with Animal Wise to hear the truth behind the legend. Tragedy in Nome In the winter of 1925, an epidemic began in the town of Nome, Alaska. Due to heavy storms, it was not possible to transport the necessary medicine by air, nor was it possible to pass over the frozen seas. The only option was to send 20 mushers with their dogs to travel more than 1,000 kilometers in winds of up to 110 kilometers per hour and temperatures 30 degrees below freezing. The plan was to pass the shipment of medicines from sled to sled until they were brought to the town of Nome along a treacherous route covering 1,085 kilometers. The Race Against Time Leonard Sapala's team of dogs was led by Togo, a 12-year-old Siberian Husky. They had to travel the longest and most dangerous leg of the journey. Their role was key to the mission as they had to take a shortcut through a frozen bay to save a day of travel. The ice in this area was extremely unstable and could break at any moment. Togo managed to guide his team successfully through more than 500 kilometers of this most dangerous stretch of the mission. Due to freezing temperatures, hurricane force winds and snowstorms, several dogs from the groups died. Despite these losses, they finally managed to bring the medicine in record time, only taking them 127.5 hours. The final stretch. The team that was in charge of covering the last leg of the journey and delivering the medicine to the town was led by the musher Gunnar Kassen and his lead dog, Balto. For this reason, this dog was considered a hero around the world. But in Alaska, everyone knew that Togo was the true hero and years later, the true story that we share today was revealed. All the dogs that undertook the arduous journey were great heroes, but Togo was undoubtedly the main protagonist for having guided his team through the hardest stretch of this perilous mission. Discover the story of another dog who also became a hero in the video that we share here. Tell us, did you know the true story of Balto and Togo? Tell us about it in the comments, and we'll see you next time. All right, so that, that was pretty neat. I wanted to show you that. Um, I also wanted to tell you a little bit about um, this race that they do called the Iditarod. I don't know if you've heard about that before, but it is a race that is done out in Alaska in honor of this run that happened to save with Balto and Togo and all the other dogs to get the medicine to the town of Nome. So we're just going to watch a little bit about this video. Hello and welcome to this year's Iditarod race. I'm Musher Strauss, and I'm going to be participating in this year's Iditarod, the greatest race left in the United States. In fact, this race has been happening since just after I was born in 1973. And ever since that race, it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and more popular than ever. Did you know that this race is about a thousand miles in length and it can take up to two weeks to finish? But it's actually about twice as fast as it used to be when it first started. It could take up to 32 days for the last place finisher to come in. Now, oftentimes the last place finishers coming in just about 10 to 14 days, if you can believe that. Well, I'll tell you a couple other facts about these uh, teams. Most sleds start with about 16 dogs. That's a lot of pulling power. And these dogs have to be a very specific breed. A few years back, they used to be able to enter any kind of dog they wanted. There was even a team that had poodles pulling the sleds. But those poodles had a very difficult time, and, and most of them did, were unable to finish the race. So now, the dogs have to be of a northern breed. So Siberian Huskies or Alaskan Malamutes have to be used as race dogs. That's because they have the 
uh, the right coat and uh, the right pulling power to pull the sleds. And it's really safer for the rider and the dogs. Did you know that the dogs wear boots? They do. And it's not because the dogs can't handle the cold on their feet. No, the snow and ice can become very sharp on their paws and can cause injury. So they wear boots on their feet so that they do not get cuts and scrapes and injuries that can prevent them from completing the race and being part of the team. And also that'll help them, like with Balto got some, uh, uh, got wet in his paws, so it'll save the frostbite too. What do the dogs eat during the, uh, the Iditarod? Well, let me tell you, they eat like kings. They have to have 10,000 to 20,000 calories per day. That's a lot of food. That's about the same amount that, that 10 men would have in a regular day. Can you believe that? That's because they run so hard and so fast, they need to replace all that energy they used up. The food they eat is actually carried on the sled by the mushers. And it's also in checkpoints that they stop at every few days along the race course. Okay, we'll stop that one there. Um, but anyhow, this year, the Iditarod is actually going on right now as I'm filming this and as uh, we're putting on the YouTube channel. So. It's uh, in March of every year and it's happening right now. So you can look into it to see how the race is going this year. Um, I do want to show you that there is, in case you didn't know, a movie about Togo and a movie about Balto. We're going to just watch the trailer for the Togo movie, which um, came out a couple years ago. Intelligence, stamina, courage. And heart. Run, run, run! Run! My business is dogs. He's undersized. He's trouble. Well, good afternoon. He's untrainable. Stop that! What does he bring to the breed? The heart of a survivor. He outran every single one of them. He's not a sled dog. He's a lead dog. What we have in our children is an epidemic. It's a death sentence. They found a cure. Round trip is 600 miles. You see that storm in the horizon? Only one man and one dog can make that run. He's 12 years old. He's too old. He'll never make that distance. Got one more in your pump. My guess is we don't find him till the thaw. All right, Togo, time for us to find out who we are. I always thought he lived for the sled, when all along, what he lived for was me. About you, but I got goosebumps after watching that. I haven't seen that one yet. And then you may not know as well, there was a Balto movie. This is a cartoon animated from 1995. So check this out. From a world of incredible spectacle, at the edge of the Alaskan frontier. It's cool. <laughs> from a place where the unexpected and the extraordinary happen every day. Come on, we catch the end of the race. Comes the unforgettable legend of Balto. But you can call him idiot.
Do you honestly think any musher would ever put you on his team? He was an outsider <laughs> who wasn't like the others. Balto, wait. Balto! Until a town needed a miracle. Rosie, we can get that medicine through. Yeah. You said what? Come on, mush! <laughs> He's going into freezing coldness to find a dog he doesn't like to bring medicine back to a town that doesn't like him! <laughs> of will he challenged the impossible you'll never get home i'll make sure of that in a race against time balto slow down balto is their only hope they've missed their second checkpoint no! No! Pictures and Amblin Entertainment invite you to join Steel. Touch that box, and I'll tear you apart. Caltag and Star. Hey, this is gonna be good. <laughs> Muck and Luck. Well, of course we were. We were in the water. We were moving. We were swimming. And Boris. Wow! Oh, I was so scared. I got uh. people bumps. <laughs> On an incredible adventure into the heart of a hero. <laughs> not dog, not wolf, you're a hero! Balto. Anyhow, those are a couple movies that maybe you're interested in watching. That is the end of History's Heroes for today. We don't have any at-home activities to do except for looking into the Iditarod because it is a pretty cool race. You can see which dogs are racing and have a favorite and let's see who won. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time for another History's Heroes. We're going to talk about blizzards again, but this time it's from 1888. See you soon. Bye.